Thank you for tuning in to The Political Soup, where you hear editorial about the issues of the day and political philosophy. Your hosts are Nick Alex, our progressive, Dana and Pugh, our conservative, all laws are classical liberal, and here is our moderator and your host, John Toll. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Political Soup Podcast. I'm your moderator, John Toll, with usual suspects, Dana, Nick, and Paul, jamming to the beat down below. All right. So this episode, we talk about something on ESPN. It's for you sports fans out there. Kane Coulter starts a union movement. It's kind of self-explanatory if you know a little bit about sports, especially Chicago. Uh, Northwestern campus is talking about trying to unionize their student sports population, or at least the basketball folks. Um, and there's a lot of interesting conversations around this as to, well, hey, football. are they... I'm sorry, football, if I said the other thing, and ignore that thing behind me that's wrong. So... <laughs> I believe nobody got that before this show. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> see how much I know? I know so much about, well, not sports. But anyway, so the question is, are these kids really students or are they employees? So that's going to be the topic. So, Paul, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell us what you think about this whole unionizing effort for uh, the sports campuses in college? Well, you know, it kind of makes sense that these hockey players, yeah, these uh, <laughs> He's uh, basketball, baseball. <laughs> hey, they they all do sport things. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, there's a ball involved. There's a ball. There's a ball. So just just get yeah, There's a ball. Hey. Right. Those these ball players. <laughs> in, in Europe, it's called soccer. Go on. There you go. There you go. There's a ball. <laughs> Paul, what do you think about the unionization, though? What what's your take on that? Uh, you know, hey, everybody's unionizing these days. My mother's in a union. She's in the uh, mother's un uh, mo uh, mother's local 45. Uh, then we've got the volunteers uh, local 15 uh, here in town. So, uh, no, I mean it, it, it's it's silly because I mean they're not really it's they're not getting paid, and you know it, it's it's kind of silly. Now, granted, I say it's silly, but I certainly support the right to do it. Um, however, I also support the right of the um, um, the um, college, institution. <laughs> the institution, to say, "Nah, we're going to hire somebody else. We're going to we're going to have somebody else come in and uh, uh, and and play instead of you." Because yeah, we don't really want that. Well, they're students. They're there for an education, right? That's that's what they're being told. So. Let's go over to Dana. What do you think about this? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I guess they have a right to try. Uh, and, and, yeah, the school has the right to uh, either kick them off of the football team or completely out of school. Uh, frankly, this is insane to me um, because they are students. And I was all ready to make that, that point before I saw that it was uh, very well made in the article, in fact. Um, that this is the equivalent of students at a school saying that they want to unionize uh, to protect themselves from the teachers, uh, which is like the in inmates unionizing in the asylum. Um, I, I don't get how they think it's a good idea. I don't think I don't I don't understand how they think they'll get away with it. Uh, every one of them is gone in four years anyway. It's not even like a long term thing. Uh, you're not negotiating for salaries or anything. So, I mean, if it's just a matter of that you think you're being treated unfairly, uh, if it's that bad, talk to a reporter and, and public outrage will change it. Uh, well, if it's actually, not bad enough to be outraged about. Then, on that note, too, the article does say that the, the players that, especially, you know, the one in question that we're talking about, they're not having a bad time. Kane is not hating his life at Northwestern. Um, so that's not even an issue here. So, Nick, what do you think about this? So, what could possibly lead them to want to do that? Well, uh, I think, Nick, I think, it's, I think it's I think it's the environment in general. I mean, let's let's talk about it. We're we're talking about them, them not being employees, but now the, the 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 truth of the matter is, for football players and for for basketball players, um, they bring a tremendous amount of revenue uh, into the school systems, uh, the big 10 themselves, uh, their football contract, uh, pays them $240 million a year, 
uh, just to televise their football games, and that doesn't include ticket revenue, merchandise revenue, and all the other things that go along with selling NCAA gear and whatnot. Um, you know, that's that's a significant amount of revenue that's going to this NCAA um, and to the member schools. And you know, really, uh, you, you come down to it: what's what's in it for the players other than they get a scholarship? But oh, you know what? They get hurt. Their scholarship gets taken away. They can't play. They can't. They, they don't get. To, they don't get a chance to keep going to school unless they have the scholarship and they can keep playing. Um, if something goes wrong medically, there's no concussion protocol like they have in some of the professional leagues. Um, you, I start to think about uh, the fact that these student athletes aren't even allowed to get jobs. Uh, they can't go and work because recruiting violations and the, the potential for uh, for uh, you know, boosters and, and whatnot in schools to abuse uh, jobs in the recruiting. I mean, that's uh, you know that that opens that other slippery slope. But at the end of the day, the student athletes have absolutely nothing to say, nothing to say okay. at all about how they're treated. All right, Paul. Final comments on this. What do you, what's your final thought? Well, my 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 main final thought is um, you, you really need to give me enough time because uh, I will go back to the Libertarians Local Three, and uh, we will have talks. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I, I mean, you know, it, it's it's kind of silly, uh, but you know, they have a right to do it. If uh, if you know they think that they can get a better deal doing that, um, as long as no one's rights are being you know uh, tar uh, stepped on, as long as everybody's liberty remains intact, you know. As long as the government is not forcing anything on the university or forcing anything on the students, that's fine. But you know, again, the the university should easily have the right to say, "Nah, no way." <laughs> okay, Nick, what's your final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I just go back to the idea that the, the you know the best the, the best athletes are clearly being recruited. So it's not as if it's a question of I'm going to dismiss this go person and go find other players. The best athletes are going to college um, to play football or to play basketball, being recruited to do so. Um, and they do so because the universities are making money off of them. So um, I wouldn't call them the normal student athlete or student. They're not. They're not like other students that go there uh, just for the education and they're paying their tuition and whatnot. Uh, they're generating revenues. They're going to be used for other things on campus. You know, building buildings and uh, taking care of the non-sports revenues uh, or non-revenue sports and things like that. Um, and uh, I guess the last thing I, I would I would just I would just say is. Um, you know the, the the definition of student athlete, which came about according to the article in the '60s, um, to help the NCAA or colleges avoid paying workers' comp claims for for injured athletes. Um, it, the the environment has changed. The, the, these schools weren't making billions of dollars uh, on on athletics, and again, it's really two sports. It's it's really you know football and men's basketball. Um, they weren't making these billion-dollar contracts. There weren't these 12-year agreements that televised these things um, back in the 60s that were bringing all this revenue. And it, it has changed, and we need to address it. And if the only way the students can start to have that conversation is by doing something that is a long shot um, from a, from a unionize, unionization perspective, then at least it starts a conversation. Okay, fair enough. Dana, final word. Uh I guess I I don't just see it as uh, that that they're uh, going to school and getting a free education as as the main benefit. It's certainly not the only benefit. I don't think it's even the main benefit um, to uh, pursuing this type of education. I think a lot of people are there hoping that they will get noticed and drafted by the NFL. I think it's the equivalent of uh, being an extra in a Pepsi commercial when you. Start out hoping that, that you'll get noticed and work your way up and eventually become a movie star. Um, that's what people do, uh, particularly in uh, high profile uh, entertainment jobs like this. Um, and frankly, if I were the NFL, I'd be a little weary of hiring these uh, 20 something people that, that sign a petition in college saying that things are just too hard. Uh, I mean, if they're too hard for them in college, I'm not sure that they're going to be NFL material. 
Um, that said, I do think that this is just another step in uh, what's kind of been taking place in football. And I'm not a sports guy either, but, but I have sort of been observing this from a distance um, of what's been taking place in football the last few years of uh, just increased complaints and attacks that's just too rough and maybe we need some government action or, or whatnot of, uh, in terms of just reducing the risk to players and such. Okay, that's a valid concern for a lot of people too. All right, well, viewers, tell us what you think. Tell us your final thoughts. Chat us up here on the YouTube channel or in Facebook or Google+, Plus or, you know what, there's a Twitter feed. Paul will post it, I promise, and it's listed on our site. So thanks again for joining us on the Political Soup Podcast. I'm your moderator and host, John Toll, and we have the usual suspects, Danon, Nick, and that guy, what's his name? Paul, yeah, that's it. All right, so thanks for joining us. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.